Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to the place where it all started. So some of you may recognize this wallpaper and this room where I am. I had to flee to my parents' house because the construction noise is just, it's becoming unbearable. I try my best to film around it, but it's really, really hard because it's super unpredictable, like when they're going to drill. And not only is it annoying in my videos, but it's really hard to concentrate as well through all that noise. So today I decided to just do a chatty little video come here where it's quieter and just, yeah, talk a little bit. So I have my tea here in a lovely Winnie the Pooh mug. I sincerely invite you to join me with your favorite hot beverage. Gosh, I keep looking around this room and like seeing my childhood. <laughs> a lot of my like childhood and teenage stuff is here. It's also currently full of winter gear because we are actually, I think when you're watching this, we will be on holiday. Um, we are going skiing in Austria, which is really exciting. I haven't been in a couple of years because one year I just didn't go and then pandemic. <laughs> so it's been years now since I last went and I'm really, really excited to go skiing again and see some snow. We've had some really warm winters over here in the Netherlands. So yeah, I think that would be lovely. I'm really excited, can't wait. If you um, want to see a little bit of that, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm sure I'll be posting stories over there of what I'm doing while I'm in Austria. But yeah, I just, I kind of just wanted to sit down, do a little update chat, I guess. So let's start maybe with how I've been doing. <laughs> I haven't been doing the best lately. I guess the, the biggest thing is that there isn't really anything horrible happening right now in my life, which is, which I'm very, very grateful for, of course. But it's just, I feel like I can't catch a break. <laughs> I struggled a lot through the pandemic for reasons that are too numerous to just name here. But obviously we had the start of the pandemic itself. Then I had um, all of the rats. I used to own rats, in case you don't know you're, if you're new on this channel. I used to own pet rats, which I loved very, very dearly. They were like my children to me and a, a huge portion of my life revolved around caring for them. And I was very lucky that my rats grew very, very old, but that also brought some problems with it. So at that point, when the pandemic started, they were starting to get some health issues. So yeah, dealing with that on top of the pandemic and all the restrictions, uh, which were, there were all kinds of issues surrounding those, them eventually passing away while that was happening. And then the construction started. <laughs> And when I say the construction, um, first there was this building right across our window. We live in an apartment building. On the other side of that is another building. So first they broke that down completely to the ground. Then they dug into the ground and then uh, they started building something new up again. And obviously we were there like all the time because it was you know, still COVID restrictions and everything. So we were locked inside. Yeah, we live in a very, very small space. It is around 40 square meters. Um, and we have two people working from home there and one of them obviously uh, filming <laughs> in there and also doing like big sewing projects in there as well. I am quite sensitive to um, all kinds of stimuli, <laughs> but sound is a big one for me and loud noises are something I have difficulty dealing with. And um, yeah, that's when they started and the loud noises never ended because <laughs> once the construction, like the, the breaking down was the worst and then obviously drilling poles into the ground. By the way, this, I'm fairly sure this is actually a Dutch thing. Um, in the Netherlands, like especially in the West and here in the Amsterdam area, we are below sea level and the ground is very wet. So all of our buildings are built on poles that are um, inserted into the ground several meters deep. So whenever there is a building being built, they first need to drill those big, heavy, huge poles into the ground that the building is then supported on. Every type of building comes with a lot of groundwork, which is very, very, very noisy and it vibrates. And for some reason, some of the poles, like some of the specific ones, made our house vibrate in a way that just instant headache. It was just, oh, I felt like Grendel. <laughs> I felt like Grendel from Beowulf who can't handle the party noises from the people in the meat hall, I think it is. But then, you know, eventually they started building it back up again and there's that's still very noisy, but not nearly as much as the whole drilling into the ground thing. So when that ended, 
one of the apartments in our apartment building got sold and the person decided to renovate the entire thing. I live in a apartment building that was built in the 70s and many of the apartments were inhabited from the 70s until now we have lots of elderly people living there that never renovated. So um, whenever someone unfortunately passes away, the apartment is usually sold and then completely renovated to bring it to the modern day. So one of the apartments sold, it was the level above ours and they completely cleared the whole thing out and then built it back up again. And there was a lot of noise coming from that, you could hear that in my videos as well. So once that quieted down, the apartment directly next to ours sold and they completely stripped it and are now building it back up again. And Obviously that is even worse because now they are drilling directly into the walls that are shared between our apartment and theirs. If I may say so, um, I have a feeling that the contractor isn't the most competent contractor. <laughs> they are making mistakes. I feel like they aren't necessarily doing things the way they're supposed to do them. They, for some reason, drilled a hole through their floor which happened to be directly into our storage unit downstairs. There was a bunch of rubble and dust and everything that came out of that into our storage. So we cleaned that up, asked them to patch it up, uh, which they did. They told us they didn't know that it was such a just... Mm. They are still doing that and they will be for at least another month or two. And then in the meantime, another apartment sold in our building and they are now renovating that as well. <laughs> so you can usually now hear two drills drilling at the same time. After two years now stuck in a much too small apartment in constant noise and then now a war starting in the country right next to the one where I was born, the noise makes it hard for me to kind of process everything that happened in the past two years and everything that is going on right now and I find it hard to deal with everything so everything kind of just piles up in my head under the pressure of this constant buzzing loud sound and it's just uh, I'm crumbling <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys I often feel like I'm crumbling down and I just can't take it anymore I'm very glad that I get to leave for a week now um, go on holiday. I feel very lucky. I still... nothing serious is happening. Um, I'm still okay. All my loved ones are fine. I'm very very grateful for that but it's just f for a sensitive person who needs a lot of quiet alone time to process kind of um, everything, <laughs> everything that happens and even just daily life, not being able to do that um, makes it very hard for me to function the way I usually do. So yeah, that's kind of where I met. That was a very long story to just kind of tell you that I'm not doing the best. But um, yeah, I'm sure I'm, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But it's just a lot. And on top of all of this, I have kind of been struggling with a little bit of creative burnout again on my channel. My channel very much goes in waves <laughs> as to how well my videos do. And I feel like I have very little control over when a video does well and when it doesn't. And I have been a little bit of a, a valley, let's put it that way, with my channel for a bit. And those are always very scary because I, I mean, until now I've always been able to climb back up again, but there might be a time when I don't, you know, and um, it's extra scary now because, as you know, we are trying to leave that place and buy a house. <laughs> And in order to buy a house, you obviously need to show that you have income because um, we're going to need a mortgage. So seeing, you know, that dwindling a little bit is terrifying <laughs> right now. But that pressure, that added pressure is not something I can deal with right now because I just, I just can't process everything. <sighs> it's just basically, there's a bunch of little things. All of those things added up are just too much for me and that's why I have been on edge <laughs> and stressed. We are starting to actively look for houses now. I have contacted a realtor and we're gonna go there, talk to them um, right after I come back from holiday. So that is really exciting. We know exactly what we're looking for, the type of house, the area, the price point, the things that we want from it. Everything is clear so we can just give them a list. You know, this is what we're looking for. Find us a home, please. And then hopefully with their help, um, it won't take too, too long, even in this insane housing market that we live in right now. I hope, I hope it'll work out. We are looking for a house in my hometown. This is the uh, city where we both went to high school. We met here. Uh, Robert's family lives just in one village over from here. 
a bunch of our friends live here, um, other friends of ours live in like neighboring cities. This town just feels like home to us, so we would very much like to return here, live here, settle here and leave Amsterdam and um, especially we would really like, if at all possible, to no longer live in an apartment building where there's a lot of turnaround and people are constantly selling and buying houses and renovating <laughs> and doing things like that. We'd love to move to just a quiet environment, um, you know, family homes. Fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed we're able to make that work. I know that the houses that we are looking for are on the market, they come up regularly. I have been keeping a very close eye on the market. I see every single house that comes up. <laughs> I've been checking everything online. We just need help from someone because um, the market's crazy. Usually by the time something pops up on our like um, house buying website, it's usually already sold. So you need that kind of realtor access to behind the scenes houses, like unlisted houses, um, in order to stand a little bit of a better chance. And they should be able to tell us how much to buy, how much to go over the asking price, because we will need to do that. Preferably, we would love to get a family home, just a very, some very standard Dutch Rijtjes house, as we call them here. <laughs> Gezinswoning, Rijtjes house. Little front garden, little back garden, that would be lovely. But if we, if we can't get a a whole house then you know an apartment would be lovely or one of those you have this type of home in the Netherlands I don't know if you have really these in other countries probably but I don't think I've ever seen them anywhere else um, where it's like a house is split into two parts so you have two front doors one front door leads into the like ground floor and that's one apartment with a garden and usually the front garden goes with that house as well. And the other door, when you open it, it leads straight up, up the stairs. Um, like when you open the door, there are stairs there. And then upstairs, you have like a two floor apartment. So the one floor will be the living area, the living room, the kitchen and everything. And then the second floor will usually be the bedrooms and the bathroom. One of those would be an option as well, I guess, for us. But honestly, even an apartment, we would be very, very lucky and happy to have one of those as well. Yeah, we're just really ready to buy and have at least one extra bedroom. <laughs> I'm also dreaming, but I know that this might not happen. Um, I mean, the chances of this happening aren't that huge, but I am dreaming of a lovely, fairly large studio space. If we could buy a house with an attic and turn the attic into a studio, that would be absolutely perfect. And I could set up my camera gear there and all of my sewing supplies and my mannequin. I wouldn't have to rearrange the entire house every time I try to film that will be fantastic. I also have some other dreams <laughs> for my future that are sewing related that I think might be easier to do if I have a dedicated space like that. That would be absolutely lovely. That is a, a, a big want but definitely not a need. Our priority is to just get out of that apartment building and into our own property. <laughs> That's the number one priority and we'll, we'll see from there um, how things go. By the way, as always, I announced that I was going to do a tea time on Instagram as for you guys to send in some topics that you would maybe like me to talk about. And quite a few people mentioned mental health and anxiety. So since I have been talking about that quite a bit in this video, maybe I thought I could share what I have been doing to try and stay semi-sane through all of this. Um, although I must say I don't feel like I've been super successful for a huge part is just kind of getting through it you just do because you have to. Um, and I don't feel like there has really been anything that I have done to make it better. But I think the biggest thing I have learned is to just accept that some days are just not it and some days just not gonna happen. And when I wake up planning to film a whole video and do all kinds of things and they start drilling and I just know it's not gonna happen and I have a little breakdown, then the best thing I can do is just accept it. Accept it, have a mental health day and just do something fun instead. I have been going on walks, um, which is lovely because it's nice and quiet outside and even when it's not quiet, it's a lot quieter than it is inside. <laughs> so listening to the bird song and feeling the sun on my skin. We have had some lovely sunny days the past couple of weeks, which has been great. Visiting with a friend, you know, coming over here to my parents' house or just not being there for a while. I have had some lovely spa days with friends. I have another one coming up that I'm really, really excited about. Take some of that relaxation time to help my brain kind of process everything and, um, find that quiet again 
that has been really, really helpful. Whenever I can, I try to approach it with a lot of humor, which is easier some days than it is others. Some days I can just laugh about the whole situation. Some days it absolutely breaks me down and I just cannot, I can, cannot see the humor in it. But whenever I can, that is lovely. It really, really helps a lot. Accepting the situation and also taking action to change what we can change has really been helpful. I mean, it is what it is. I can't film as many videos now as I would maybe like, and they don't come out the way I would like because of that noise, um, both the noise in the video and the noise inside my head that just makes me unable to focus on what I should be doing. So just accepting that and at the same time, you know, taking action, contacting those realtors, getting this whole house buying process on the road um, has been the most helpful thing I think I have done for this. But in the end, we're just waiting it out. And I am just very glad that the pandemic seems to be coming towards an end. At least over here in the Netherlands, pretty much all of the measures have lifted over here. So we are able to visit with friends and go places and eat out and do fun things again, which has been really great. We went to the movies yesterday. We saw the Batman. Oh, guys. <laughs> I don't know why this is, but I just love Batman. I I'm not a huge superhero fan or a comic book fan in general, but for some reason Batman just hits different. I have loved Batman since I was young. There is just, there's something about Batman. He is by far the coolest superhero. I just, I adore him. <laughs> At first I wasn't sure how I would, how I would feel about a new Batman, because I mean Christian Bale is my Batman. He's the, the Batman that I grew up with, but I was very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, this was good. It was a good Batman. I, I accept, I approve of this Batman. <laughs> and the movie was great as well. It had everything that I expect from a superhero movie. It had just the right amount of cliche catharsis to make you feel good without being too predictable, um, but just, you know, that comfortable feeling. It was just a nice kind of just suspenseful enough, but not stressful movie that I needed. It was great. Explosions, loved it. A really good Batmobile. I loved the Batmobile. And it had kind of classic murder mystery whodunit vibes, which were amazing as well. So yeah, I really liked the Batman. And if there is another part of this Batman series, I will definitely go see it as well. I've also been reading more or trying to read whenever I can. Uh, I finally finished the Red Rising series, which I have been reading for a year. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it took me so long. I got stuck in the fourth book, but once I kind of made it through that bump, I powered through the other two like super quickly. The second half of the fourth one and the fifth one. I think I'm excited for the sixth part to come out. I don't, I, I don't know how I feel about this book series. I'm very conflicted on it. I think I have a bit of a love-hate relationship <laughs> with it. It makes me feel things, which is definitely a good thing, right? You want that from books. But I always, I, I don't know, I feel a bit weird recommending it because it was very hard to read. I found it very hard to read. I'm not used to reading books like this. It is extremely violent, very graphic, very vulgar, gritty, dirty. At some points, I felt like this was a man's book, if there is such a thing. Um, there was a lot of emphasis on technicality. It's a, it's a sci-fi book and there were lots of descriptions about the aircraft that they're flying and just the flying in general and uh, warfare and st war strategy and things like that. Little emphasis on emotions, but once there were emotions, they were like there. <laughs> just brought in a very different way, very kind of in your face, you know? I find it difficult to read, not because it's not written well, it was written very well, but just, yeah, again, I'm, I'm a sensitive person. It was a lot. <laughs> This is one of those book series where you're not sure that any character will survive and it's just, yeah, it's a lot. I'm not sure I can handle another book in this series, but I do want to know how it ends, so I will probably read it. Anyway, that's Red Rising. Um, when that was done, I could finally sit down and read The Slow Regard of Silent Things, the Patrick Rothfuss short story that is set in the Kingkiller Chronicle world which I am, by the way, also very eagerly awaiting the third book. But I recently read that. It was an odd little book, but really cute. I liked it. And I'm about to start reading Dune. I'm gonna take that on holiday with me. I got a beautiful edition of the first trilogy in one from my husband on Christmas. I feel like Red Rising drew a lot of inspiration from Dune, so I'm really excited to read that. I think I have been talking, actually rambling, for a really long time. I'm sorry, guys. This video isn't really about anything. I just... 
This felt good. I think I needed to get some of this off my chest. I will keep you updated on the house buying process, of course. Um, fingers crossed <laughs> that we make progress on that soon. Um, but yeah, I, I will keep you updated. If you enjoy seeing snippets from my personal life, I share all of this stuff over on Instagram, so you can follow me on there to stay in touch. Oh, guys, do you remember this mirror? The mirror with the squares, where I would do all of my earliest hair tutorials. It's really fun to be filming in here again. It's been a really, really long time. Thank you. Thank you for joining me, guys. Thank you so much for being here and for your ongoing support, even through the valleys of my channel. <laughs> which I'm sure will soon turn into a peak again. It's all about perseverance. I've been here for 15 years, pretty much, pretty much 15 years, still going strong. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are safe and I will see you when I get back from holiday, which for you should be next week. Bye, guys.